Hi, this is Don Stevens. We put together a little video on how to use the Alnor flow hoods that we purchased, and we wanted to take you through some of the benefits and ways you could use that tool. These are available from the regional sales managers. You can use them for troubleshooting and for training. By using the flow hood on an existing fan where you've had a complaint about low flow, it allows you to actually scientifically measure what that airflow is, sort of a Mr. Wizard look instead of putting a piece of paper up on the face of the grill. You can also use them in training to show the impact of different size of duct or duct runs or what happens when you make a tight turn, things like that. So we'll show you some of those tricks over the next few minutes. Appreciate your time. The Alnor flow hood comes in a case that's padded, about 18 inches cube. It has a sleeve to reach up to the ceiling from the device and the actual flow measuring device itself. This operates using a pitot tube array that measures the pressure of the air flowing through it so it can actually calculate what the volume is. The sleeve is made of a nylon type fabric and it's supported by a frame that we have to assemble that is two feet square. Now this will pop together at the four corners and then will be attached to that sleeve. A little awkward to put these together initially but once you do it a time or two it's not too bad to do it. You notice that these have a piece of uh, black foam rubber on them and this is what seals against the ceiling when you push the device up toward the ceiling to cover up the fan or the grill or whatever it might be. The hood is used for a variety of purposes and we're going to talk about measuring the flow both supply and exhaust. When you go to put the sleeve onto the frame, line up the, the sewn corners that you'll see in the sleeve itself and then push what's basically a bungee cord into the channel on that frame. A little awkward at first, you'll find it's easier over time. It really only goes in well once it's stretched the whole length. So if you can get her over the corners and then go back to actually get it into the channel, it works better. As you try to pull it up, it'll pop off a time or two. But once you get it done once or twice, you'll find it's pretty easy to do. Then it's not just a matter of squeezing this bungee cord, if you will, down into the channel in order to make it so that it will be a tight fit. The other end of the sleeve slides over the actual end of the flow measurement device. It has some elastic in it, so it'll make a tight seal also around the larger end of the hood itself. Now the sleeve will be held up by some rods that connect onto these spring-loaded clips inside of the flow measurement device. These tubes, kind of a graphite tube, that will slide down onto um, that bracket that's spring-loaded and there will be four of these to support the four sides of the framework. Once you get them all into place, then you'll be able to pull the framework up onto the rods. The first one of these that you do is kind of awkward to do because it's, you know, you haven't got four hands going. And once you get that first one done, however, they're a little easier to do. So there's a little cup that's on the frame for the end of the rod to go into, and that will hold it in place. And now, once we get all four of those up and into those cups, now this sleeve is quite tight and is stretched out to be able to reach up to the ceiling. This control device has a switch on the side of it. As you'll see, the screen comes on to show the flow rates and such. It has a control for the direction of the air that's flowing that you can change whether it's supply or exhaust by pushing this button. And there's a little arrow on the screen that points up or down, and you just control which direction the air is going with that button. I'm trying to show you which way it's going by my finger. There's also three scales on here of what the CFM is going to be. It'll automatically pick the right scale and adjust as needed. It'll give you a digital readout as well as an analog on the graph. This is powered by four C-cells inside of the box. Be careful to make sure that you turn off the device and it doesn't get bumped or else it'll wear out the batteries between uses. On the side is a red button that will lock the reading into place. So once you've taken a reading, you can bring it down and actually see the same number. Here we're going into a small bathroom and we're going to put it up against the ceiling. This will seal itself because of the black foam around the edge of it. And now with a tight fit up above, all the air that's going out of the fan is being pulled through here and it's about 50 CFM. 
So if I push that button, it'll lock the flow, and then I can bring it back down, and then I can read it a little more comfortably once I get it down. This device can also be used for the discharge side. In this case, this is a range hood that discharges out through the sidewall. And the device can go up against what's a kind of a rough surface with the shingles, but it'll compensate for it. And again, most of the air is going through it. And in this case, about 175 CFM. Note that I've changed the control so that we're now measuring the discharge of a fan instead of the exhaust rate up into a fan. Again, we can use that button to lock in the number, bring it down so that we can read it in a more comfortable position. This is an example of using the hood to demonstrate the flow on a fan in a classroom. The fan has an adapter I made sitting on it to allow the end of the Elnor hood to seal and the air is drawn through into the fan and you can get a direct readout. Now you can use this tool to demonstrate the flow of a fan by itself or you can use it for a teaching moment to connect ducting to it and show the impact of different ducts or different terminal devices on that flow. Thanks for your time.